Hello, very good evening everyone. This is Ray TV Primetime News. I am Akash Vasanta Pipituru. Let's look at the headline first. BJP condemns the demo against President Rajapaksa. A cup of coffee will win over Ryan, President Rajapaksa says. First set of Tamil military car is passed out. Four persons have been confirmed dead following the crash of the Sri Lankan Air Force Antonov 32 in Hokandara, Atrugiriya. According to the director of the Kalambo National Hospital, Dr. Anil Jaisinghe, one survey was transferred from the Sri Javardhanapura Hospital to the National Hospital with survey burns. Sri Lanka Air Force Media Spokesman Vin Kamanga Vihan Senaviratna confirmed that five persons were on board their ill-fated aircraft. He further noted that the last message sent out by the pilot had noted that they could not see the airstrip on the Radmalan airport clearly due to the weather condition in the area. Addressing his maiden propaganda rally in Anuradhapura, President Mahindra Rajapaksa said today that he needed only a cup of coffee to low opposition leader Ranil Vikramasinghe to the United People Freedoms Alliance. He said it is not a big problem when one leaves the party to welcome another. This Atanayaka joined our party soon after having a cup of coffee with me. If they take someone from us, we will retaliate by taking someone from them. We took the secretary and we can also take Ryan. Only one cup of coffee would be necessary for that. They attempt to give dollars and take our members. We won't spend money in that manner. He said the Satanaka was not taken by giving money. He said he had only had a cup of coffee with him. Meanwhile, political analysts said that the president was making a fresh move by holding his first election rally in the scared city of Anuradhapura, which is also considered as a bastion of the common opposition. The president is expected to participate in the rally after receiving blessing from the Jayashri Mahabodhi and the Mahasangha. The rally will take place at the city of Anuradhapura. Former Minister Rajita Senaratna says government currently attempting to cast more fake votes in the upcoming presidential election. At present, government print a set of voting seats in the novel camp at China Bay. Lathe printing machine would be used to print these voting sheets and would be sent to the Valley Sarah novel camp novel sources informed me, Minister said. I have lodged a complaint to election commissioner this regard. Meanwhile, they never implement 70th amendment but grant power to election commissioner to satisfy people in such a situation we cannot expect justice, parliamentarian Mangala Samaravira said. Jatika Hello Rumaya General Secretary and ex Minister Patali Champika Ranavaka commenting on the decision of party strong man Udaya Gamampila to support government said he is a clever politician. I wish him all the best. Let people decide what kind of a political leadership this country needs now. He has made his own decision according to his political party. Myself and party member are disappointed over this decision, Ranavaka said.
I have been compelled to leave the party for which I made many sacrifices. Today, when there are defections from political parties, they say that they were not treated well. I did not face any such situation, nor did I have any problem. I was treated well by my party. Today, I am here because of policy reasons. Clear answers were not provided for the issues that I raised. Although I do not approve the accord reached with both Sandrika and Ranil, I have decided to remain silent for the sake of the party. I am resigning from the party today without moving forward with the majority decision. I am of the view that only the JHU should have an executive presidential system with the appropriate amendments. Sirisena cannot do both within 100 days. We believe that the judiciary, the elections, the audit and bribery and corruption commissions need to remain independent. However, the answer was not the 17th Amendment. <laughs> We too had issues. Minister Vimal Virawangsa also had issues. The JHU also had issues. There is no one in this party that does not have issues. However, we will never forget our main rival or the direction of our journey because of these issues. We believe that the current president will be the last president who will have these powers with the correct amendments. <laughs> I have taken a decision to render my fullest and honest support. As an active politician in the UNP and as a cricketer for many years, I came to this decision based on three facts. In a political point of view, I believe that he has taken the right decision to move forward. As a fellow teammate who was with me right along, I wish Hashan and his entire family a graceful political journey. I constantly say that we must take politics on a good path. At this instance, Hashan Tilakaratna always engaged in politics in a clean and pure manner. So I believe that he will continue with this trend. <laughs> Minister Vasudevananyakara requested the government to return back Tamil's lands to owned by military personnel in North and hold a discussion with Tamil National Alliance to establish a democratic ruling in this country. Minister made this statement during the media briefing held at Colombo yesterday. Government should share power with Northern province on proper manner. Governor should not control the council and need to implement a civil administration at the province. Mahinda is the only leader to develop this nation. Chandrika and Maitri will never benefit this nation. Bharatiya Janata Party leader El Ganeshan said that the refusal to meet and talk to the Sri Lankan president and at the same time Demanding resolution of the Tamil's issues was similar to asking a doctor to cure sick persons without seeing them, the Hindu reported. Referring to media reports that Indian fishermen may abide by a seasonal moratorium on fishing across the international maritime boundary line. Mr. Ganeshan said the central government of India would talk to the Sri Lankan government and assault a permanent solution to the fishermen issues. Once the central issued the permanent solution to the fishermen issues, the naysayers who called the Bharatiya Janata Party's efforts mera drama would become silent, he said. 
asked about the political opposition to the President Rajapaksa's visit to Tirupati. He said it was unfair to prevent somebody from pursuing one's personal belief. A group of United National Party Kandy Municipal Council members led by S. Sivanyanam joined the ruling party yesterday. They met president at the presidency secretariat yesterday and promised to cast their support to president at the upcoming presidential election. Candy district parliamentarian Lohan Ratwatha, Dilum Amunugama and the candy mayor Mahindra Ratwatha were present at this meeting. Former chairman of the Kotikavata Mulleria Pradesh Sabha, Prasanna Solanga Arachi, said the government should take the full responsibility if someone killed him during the election period. Speaking to reporters at the opposition leader's office in Colombo this evening, Solanga Arachi said there was a conspiracy to kill him and his life was under threat. Solangarachi, who was known to be a staunch supporter of the late Bharat Jalakshman Premachandra, recently joined the common opposition and pledged his support to Pine Tripal Sirisena, the common candidate of the opposition. Passing out a ceremony of the first set of military personnel attached to 23rd Division of Sri Lankan Army held in the Punani headquarters last afternoon. 405 recarriers representing Tamil Singhal and Muslim communities were passed out yesterday. Commander of the 23rd Division on Sri Lankan Army Brigadier DDUK Hetiarachi was the chief guest at the event. 31 Tamil youths, 7 Muslim youths selected from all around the country completed their three month training period yesterday while recarriers performed well were awarded with gifts. Relatives, parents, and friends of these recarriers were present at this passing out ceremony. Northern Provincial Council today passed a motion regarding the release of fishermen arrested over smuggling heroin. Eight fishermen, including three Jaffna fishermen and five Indian fishermen, arrested on year 2011 for smuggling heroin to Jaffna Peninsula. Five Indian fishermen have already released an NPC pass motion on demanding to release Sri Lankan fishermen. On last October, Sri Lanka court issued death sentence against these fishermen. Five Indian fishermen were released under a presidential pardon and three Jaffna fishermen are still in the prison. Squadron leader JMW N. Abhivardhana, who died when the Antonov A-32, he was piloting crash into the Hokandar area in Atrugiriya on Friday, was an old boy of Royal College, Colombo. He was a resident of the Kurnagal area. The Sri Lankan Human Rights Commission has requested the police to submit a report on the mechanism that will be used to the down election risk. Related banners, cutouts and posters in the run up to the presidential poll 2015. A protest was held in the Ahadwaba Nitogamu Junction in Galgamu. The protesters demand that the immediate solution be provided for the threat of wild elephant attacks. Residents of four villages participated in this protest. Three houses have been damaged by a fire that erupted in Kamacho de Nigambo. Police said that two houses were destroyed owing to the fire that broke out at 8.30 p.m. Wednesday. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed a $1.1 trillion budget hours before government was due to shut down at midnight on Thursday. The Republican measure passed by 219 votes to 206 after President Barack Obama had urged Democrats to support the measure. It will fund most of the government until September 2015, but some areas will only receive emergency funding. Republicans won control of both House and Senate in elections last month. The bill funds the government at the same levels that were negotiated last December. It also adds emergency funding requested by President Barack Obama, including funds to fight Ebola in West Africa and money for U.S. airstrikes against Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. 
CIA Director John Brenner has defended the agency's forced 9-11 integration methods but admitted some techniques were harsh and abhorrent. Speaking at CIA headquarters, he said some officers acted beyond their authority but most did their duty. A scathing Senate report two days earlier said brutal methods like waterboarding were ineffective. But Mr. Brennan asserted the CIA did a lot of things right at a time when there were no easy answers. Our reviews indicate that the detention and interrogation program produced useful intelligence that helped the United States thwart attack plans, capture terrorists and save lives, Brennan told a rare CIA news conference in Virginia. But we have not concluded that it was the use of enhanced interrogation techniques, ATS within that program that allowed us to obtain useful information from detainees who were subjected to them, he added. The cause and effect relationship between the use of ITS and useful information subsequently provided by the detainee is, in my view, unknowable. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has vowed to split bloods to secure constitutional recognition for indigenous people, saying he wants a referendum in 2017. But Mr Abbott said he would not rush with the date until he was confident the referendum would succeed. To be passed, the change must be backed by a majority of people in a majority of Australia's six states. The Constitution currently does not recognize Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders as the nation's first people. Unlike in other nations settled by Europeans, such as Canada and New Zealand, Australia's Constitution does not mention Indigenous people. In the past few years, there have been discussions about recognizing them in a preamble to the Constitution, and about changing the main part of the Constitution to include a section that outlaws racial discrimination. Aboriginal Australians represent about 2.5% of Australia's 24 million people. Generations of discrimination and disadvantage have left them with poor health and low levels of education and employment. An unbeaten 104 from Joe Root guided England to a five-wickets victory in the fifth one-day international against Sri Lanka in Palikali. Beginning their chase of 240 a day late after Wednesday's rain, they lost both openers cheaply inside eight overs. James Taylor, 68, and Root put on 104 for the third wicket to revive England. And Root added 86 with Ravi Bopra, reaching 100 with a 6, as England won with 5 balls left to cut Sri Lanka's lead to 3-2 to two with 2 matches to play. And that's for the news today. Once again we will meet at this same time tomorrow. Have a good night.